Mega Mechatronics. Welcome back to the Mega Mechatronics Bootcamp series for mechanical engineering. We're covering topics related to materials, and we'll be looking at ductility and toughness. Speaking of ductility, we're describing the plasticity of the materials, the ability for that material to plastically deform, to permanently deform. Some terms related to the plasticity of a material, bendability, crushability, deformability, malleability, and ductility, of course. So looking at the technical term of ductility, that's the performance under tensile stresses, and malleability, the performance under compressive stresses. Uh, we're trying to crush it together. And uh, highly malleable material would be something like gold where you can keep uh, pounding on it and crushing it, rolling it, whatever, until it's a thousandth of an inch thick, which is about the quarter of a thickness of a piece of paper. You think paper's thin, gold leaf is much thinner. And the reason is, the gold atoms stick together, pun intended. So, But ductility is, is the general term that we use to describe the plasticity of materials. Um... Here's application of malleability, so we're crushing the material. You see an English wheel here uh, applying pressure between two rollers, and you roll that material through, um, and it does stretch it out as well a little bit, but you are applying a uh, compressive stress to that material. So that fender he's working on uh, started off life as uh, at much flatter, and you can see it's taken shape. That takes a, uh, a lot of skill. Here's a rivet, and uh, it's important that rivets don't uh, fracture or break when they're, they're put under a compressive load. You see, uh, here's a side profile of a rivet, and you see there's a little die at the bottom, and uh, we're hammering, and we're deforming the other end to create a fastener. And rivets have actually been around since the Bronze Age. Uh, at least 2,500 years ago. And uh, here's an application of rivets on a motorcycle chain. So each of those cross pins has been riveted in. And you see someone here is manually riveting a master link in there to uh, complete the chain. And an application of ductility. Here's a wire drawing process. So we're pulling some sort of wire. This is the dies are and the size of the material is uh, quite exaggerated but just trying to show you, so we're pulling it through. We're not pushing it. If we're pushing it, we'd be extruding it, but this is drawing. So as we pull the wire from uh, a coil stock of a certain size, and we add some lubricant, pull it through a die, and we're stretching that material out. And it is uh, cold working that material as well. Uh, here's another uh, form of ductility. Um, is stamping, so we have a flat piece of sheet metal, and then uh, we put it in a die, and then those dies uh, press together. You could see an example here of a side panel or a aperture, side aperture of a vehicle. And it started life off as a flat piece of uh, metal, and then it was stamped out and formed, and also sheared. You can see there's some shearing going on there. So we can derive uh, a good idea of. Um, ductility from our tensile test. So we start off here with a strain of zero and then we pull it across until the breaking point which is uh, the percent elongation is the maximum strain if you were to take that off of the stress strain curve. Uh, but it's not a perfect measurement because it does depend on the initial length that you're using because there's more change uh, in the middle where it fractures than on the outside. So a better way to gauge ductility with our tensile tests is to measure uh, the necking. So you see in A, it's quite brittle. There's no necking, no change. Uh, B is what we expect from a ductile fracture. And then C is like the ideal uh, ductility example, the most ductile. 
So to calculate that, we need to find the reduction of area. So it's simpler, uh, similar to the strain calculation where we're looking at the percent change in length here. We're going to find the percent change in area. So we're taking the change in area. We're going to divide that by the initial area to get our percentage change. So to find the change in area, we need to know the initial area. And we minus that from the ending area. And that gives us our delta change. And we divide that by the initial area and it gives us a percentage reduction of area. So let's look at some examples of some materials in these parameters. So looking at 1141 steel, we're at 12%, 47% reduction in area. 4130 steel, 11%, 43%. They're pretty close, but you can see the 4130 is quite a bit stronger. You'd probably prefer that material over the 1141 uh, because it has similar ductility and toughness, uh, but it is uh, quite a bit stronger. And uh, 9255, that's a bit harder. Uh, it is very strong, but not very ductile. And then you see the 304, 431, huge difference. So I'm trying to show that the material uh, alloy makes, makes a big difference in ductility, uh, and what makes it even more uh, difference in ductility is the heat treatment uh, to that steel. So looking at toughness, uh, this is the resistance to fracturing or breaking, how it reacts and impacts, and what we typically see is uh, the more ductile the material, the more tough it is. Uh, but not always. So low ductility, typically low toughness, but a better indicator is the area under the curve looking at the stress strain curve so if you're looking at the brittle fracture and you draw a straight line down where uh, where it uh, breaks at the break strength we can see the area there and now if we take the ductile one do the same thing the material with the with more area will be more tough so you see that ductile one's definitely more tough let's take another example some stress strain curves here so starting from the lowest toughness, just based on looking at the chart, we can sort of derive a toughness. So uh, just looking at the, the area here, we can see B has the least amount of area. D, even though it is more ductile, it's uh, not as tough as A, which is, you can see the strength really makes up for it. And then C, of course, is very tough, very ductile material. And to quantify ductility, we do impact testing. So here is a Sharpie with a C impact test. Uh, pendulum swings down, hits the material, and then we're going to measure the back swing and see how much energy was absorbed. So if we were to free swing that hammer without the specimen in, in uh, not in the way, it would swing up to a certain distance. If we put something in the way, it'll swing through, break it, but that material would have absorbed some of that energy in the pendulum that potential energy and then it won't swing as high and that's how we can sort of uh, that's how we get the amount of energy that it absorbs here is a very similar pendulum style uh, IZOD test and you can see uh, the sharpie on the left there the specimen supported on both sides and the striker comes right right at the notch right in, in the middle um, and then we have our IZOD test where the specimen supported on one side and the specimens impacted at a different area. Uh, so let's take a quick look at this video from Materials 2000. Excellent YouTube channel. Here's a link. Uh, definitely go visit and watch that full video. So looking at the specimens, there is a notch in there. The Sharpie and the IZOD are very similar. Uh, the IZOD is uh, a little offset, so the one leg is longer. But other than that, dimensionally, they are similar. Here's a close-up of a real uh, Sharpie specimen. And we also want to examine the specimen after we fracture them. So you can see these two steels are the same composition at different heat treats. Uh, 
you can see it, there's a brittle fracture it just breaks off and less deformation and the ductal fracture you see there is some deformation and again with this different test you can get a good idea that the one on the left is brittle compared to the one on the right because the one on the right uh, didn't even completely break and you see how the edges are rounded and folded up so it plastically deformed and that absorbed a little bit more energy we can we can guess uh, as well as this impact test, we uh, can test uh, ma uh, manufacturing processes such as laser welding here, other types of weldings, heat treatments, and things like that, stress relieving. So we weld those together, and we try them at different heat treats to uh, stress relieve and um, make sure that we're not, we don't have any brittle welds or anything. So temperature does affect. Uh, the ductility and some materials experience a ductile brittle transition. Looking at an example here, the vertical axis is the amount of energy absorbed. The tougher it is, the higher it is. And then we have a temperature scale at the bottom. So you see up top the copper, it actually maintains its ductility across a, a wide range of temperatures. Uh, the mild steel, uh, and you see the FCC that's face center cubic structure. And, and then the mild steel's body center cubic structure. So that does affect um, this ductile brittle transition where body center cubic structures uh, exhibit this sort of phenomena. So you can see the mild steel uh, right around zero degrees, it starts getting more brittle. And the zinc and nylon uh, are, are pretty brittle around room temperature. And we can take a look at this uh, exotic material. You see it uh, doesn't start losing mechanical properties until around 1,000 degrees, uh, 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 500 degrees Celsius possibly. That's pretty high. That's a huge range. Um, and that's why they use it in uh, jet engines, F1 exhausts, and I've even designed some heat treat fixtures uh, to heat treat some valve springs using this material exclusively. So that concludes our ductility and toughness video, and thank you for watching.